Good evening ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another tournament report. So I mentioned on my paint test ramblings last time that I was going to a tournament next weekend. That weekend has come and went, and now I'm uh, going to, to give you a little summary of uh, how it went down. I think I'll go fairly de in detail with the games, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So the tour tournament was at the Games of Westridge. So in Westeros, um, and it's a tag team tournament. So the concept is that you take a 2,200 point army of uh, your choice, and then you team up with uh, a friend, and they bring a army of the same size. Uh, any combination will do. And then you team up and make an alliance. And then each game you face another alliance. So there's four, four players at each table. Um, this year, the, there was an extra twist in that you could uh, team up. Uh, you could use the uh, magic items or uh, enchantments from the uh, uh, your uh, your allied army. So if you had a Empire Sonshal army allied up with Vermin Swarm, you could take Vermin Swarm items on your marshal marshals and inquisitors and all of that. Um, so, before I begin, I want to say my thanks to the TO, Dennis. It's a fantastic job he does, uh, hosting this every year and several other tournaments. And this is this is my favorite tournament. Uh, plain and simple, it is incredible. incredible. It's so much fun. Uh, they also have wacky scenarios, as, as we will see uh, during the games. And uh, yeah, just hanging out, meeting two people each game and having a, a uh, teammate uh, that you can laugh with. It's it's so much fun. Uh, and, the, and the crowd is really relaxed, people are just enjoying the games. And it, it's wonderful. So my teammate and I, we figured that Vermin Swarm and Empire Sonshal would be a good combo. I broke out my Empire Sonshal for the first time. Uh, and we made a neat little list together, but then unfortunately he got sick shortly beforehand, uh, so he, he had to drop out. And I talked with Dennis, the TO, and uh, we figured out that I could borrow an, uh, uh, my, my partner's army um, at a tournament from another guy. Um, so I, I just brought my half and uh, figured, yeah, I, I just play myself, uh, ally up with, with myself, um, and that would have been fine. But as I got to, to the tournament in the morning, uh, I was informed that one other team had dropped out and one other team had uh, lost one of his members. So I was asked if I could team up with this guy. Um, and I figured why that not. Um, so me and Joachim uh, teamed up. Uh, we've met before many times. I don't think we've ever, ever really, really played, but we'll, we've chatted a bit uh, and uh, we come along fine. So uh, we figured it, it would be interesting. So we teamed up uh, and we just took the armies that we had uh, and, uh, and went for it. So the armies were these two. He had Sylvan Elves and, and we kept the items from our companion armies. So if it, essentially we had four army books at the table. So lots of confusion, confusion for our, our opponents. But he had a prince. Uh, who was a shapeshifter and with a spear with the sliver of the sliver of the blazing dawn so he had five attacks every hit becomes two hits and strength five ap five or six and then uh, two up armor save and five up ages uh, flammable but uh, dragonfire gem and uh, also agility 10 when charged 10 when charging and nine otherwise so he can fight. He had five Heath Hunters, little uh, fast cav unit, uh, 23 Forest Guard, Spears and Shield, Full Command, and Predator Pennant. So they had distracting. Five Well Huntsmen, uh, another five Well Huntsmen, three Castle Knights with bows, and five Pathfinders. For myself, I had a Marshal with a great, great weapon as my general. He was naked otherwise. Uh, a Wizard with Pyromancy, a Master Pyromancy. And he had second awakening from the Vermin Swarm, so he could re-roll the dice for the number of hit 
hits he caused with his damage spells. This is an okay item for the Vermin Swarm. It's an amazing item when you have Pyromancy. And in addition, I had a ma Magical Heirloom, so I had, had an extra spell and almost always took um, Quicksilver Lash from Al Alchemy, which is also an amazing sp spell with Second Awakening. So he was a lot of fun, this guy. Then we had an Inquisitor, Gilia Gonzalez. Uh, some of these guys I will refer to by names, so I just warn you about that. She had sw Swarm Master on her paired weapons, so 3d6 attacks with uh, Strength 3 and AP 1. Uh, also Scurrying Whale from the Vermin Swarm, so March 20 and uh, Tiny, so she could move through our units. And Ghostly Guard for some protection, so we had 4 up Armor Save, which increased to 2 up against non-medical attacks. Uh, five Electoral Cavalry, Positions and Great Weapon. Um, Twenty Light Infantry with full command and ho household standard. Uh, five Imperial Rangers, led by the um, infamous Orc Bork Orc. A Cannon, uh, a Volagon and an Arcane Engine with Arcane Shield. And here we made a little change in our list actually. Yeah, originally it had uh, Foresight, but giving out a bubble of uh, lightning reflexes to an elf army is not li really useful, so we asked with the TO and it was fine to change it to Arcane Shield. We sw I, I dropped some items uh, to get that in. So that was the army. Um, let's switch to the games. We'll go to slideshow, pause it. So, um, this was the first game, and the scenario is uh, Kill the Dragon. So as I said, the scenarios are very uh, wacky. Many of them are taken from the scenario booklet, booklet of the Night Age, uh, which I myself have worked on, so some of them I can blame myself for, this one included. But over here we have a dragon, and if you kill it, you win. The second objective. Uh, second objective. Basically. It, it can go otherwise. So. And it's pretty dangerous in combat, but um, yeah, it's a dragon. Um, so. Our army uh, deployment was uh, marching column, but you had to choose the dragon side. You couldn't deploy in this 24 inch zone here. So, our army uh, we deployed um, our knights first, all the gun, and then we have some uh, heath hunters, wild huntsmen, uh, pathfinders, the arcane engine, my giant. Uh, he was meant to be an ab abomination, so his base was wrong, but uh, now, I, now I used him as an arcane engine instead. Um, the forest guard. And we have the cannon here behind the giant. My light infantry with all my three characters in, the, in them. Uh, more uh, wild huntsmen. Orc orc and his imperial rangers. And the castle knights. Uh, their army. Um, we have some some imperial imperial rangers here in uh, our forest. Um, they must have dropped the forest too. Yeah, they dropped this one back here. So it's uh, a mirror match, really. Uh, we can see here a little bit close up on their army. So they had a unit of knights here uh, with a prelate in them. Uh, I think that's this guy, and also a marshal. I, I don't really remember, but I think there were two characters. Um, and then the important guy is a uh, prince, a Sylvan Elf prince on a horse. He's got the uh, huntsman uh, Kindred uh, and the Light of the Sonstal. So he's got, I think, on the charge six attacks, um, rerolling, uh, hitting on two plus with hatred thanks to the prelate, and sixes. Uh, you got two hits from Battle Focus, and then every hit just wounds and no armor save. So, yeah, he, he just averages like seven, seven wounds every time, no matter what it is, basically. Uh, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, an eagle, an eagle. I think six sentinels, eight uh, writers with uh, repeater guns, uh, some Sylvan archers with a BSB and a. Uh, Pyromancy Master, I think. Um, a rocket battery and a mortar. Uh, light infantry with crossbows. A tree father 
and some briar maidens in the big unit. So uh, this is from another angle. First turn, he charges the knights into the dragon and wipes it out, no problem. Um, this is after the rest of his movement. He dropped this unit, so he had to rearrange them, and they, they didn't die all. Um, but he, he shuffled around a bit. And then they open fire. And I just show you here this is before their uh, magic and shooting phase. This is after. Notice that a few things are missing, so let's go back. They killed. Uh, we had put the, our, our Heath Hunters here in front of the, Bol the Bolygon to give it some cover. They killed the Heath Hunters. They killed the Volygon. They killed the uh, Wild Huntsman. They almost killed the Kestrel Knights. They almost killed the Imperial Rangers. And they did six wounds to my Lightning Infantry. They failed the panic and fled off the table. Discipline 9, no, no reroll. Both of us had the BSB in the other half of our alliance. It was only after the game that, that we re realized that we should count the health points of the characters not just as one model, so we shouldn't even have taken that panic test. Uh, so that was a shame. But in the end, I don't think it would have made much difference. So this is how it looked after the, their first turn. So uh, now it's our turn. And yeah, there's really nothing we can do. We move up, up, about a, a bit. Um, and then in their second turn, they annihilate pretty much the rest of it. Only the knights are left. The only interesting thing thing that happened, uh, and yeah, they, they annihilated everything, and uh, the knights were left, and we just called it uh, minus zero. So the only interesting thing that happened was they charged the knight unit into um, our civilian lord, uh, Robin Hood, as we called him, and he went into a duel with their their own silver prince. So this was the duel between the silver princes with stolen weapons. Uh, they did five wounds to Robin Hood after his age of saves, but we did six back and he didn't have any saves. So moral victory, our uh, super kitty lord was more deadly than there was. So hooray. But zero points from the first game. These two guys, they are really good players and they had a devastating shooting phase, so it was a dangerous matchup. Uh, next game, we were at a uh, the bridge scenario. So the scenario was to take the bridge. At the end of the game, if you had more scoring units on it than the opponent did, then you win. And it, uh, the center is what counted uh, for the units. And also, uh, units that were on the bridge, center again, um, they got plus one discipline and stubborn. But enemy, enemy units got plus one to hit against them. And the sides of the bridge were impassable terrain, and if you fled off it, you died. Uh, flyers could fly on and off it as they pleased. Um, so the army, uh, we were playing against uh, two friends of, of my uh, uh, teammate, so he knew their, their army pretty well. Um, but we'll go through it here. Some This is Empire and Saurian Ancients, so some uh, Imperial Rangers up here, some uh, Light Nefant with crossbows, Ramphodons, uh, they had targeted I think a Heath Rider unit and maybe this big unit, I don't really know. Some uh, uh, Knights of the Sun Griffin, some Knights, Knight Lorders, 20 Saurus Warriors, I think with fear. A dude on a Griffin, a Marshal, um, the Egg of Quetzalcoatl, and some other items. He was pretty tanky and had a lot of strength, six attacks and the uh, breath attack. So pretty cool. And a uh, Alpha Carnosaur with the dude, dude on top. Really kill you. Well, I think this guy on the Griffin had impact hits also. Thanks to some item from the Sour Nations. Uh, 15 uh, warriors, more Light Infantry with crossbows, and some um, some um, state militia, and two spearbacks. And in here we have a uh, Master of Cosmology wizard. So that's the army. We uh, um, we got a shoe side this one with the hill in the back for the cannon and they deployed one unit and then we dropped everything to go first we felt pretty good about this matchup we put the cannon here to zone a lot of um, pyromancy here to blast away <coughs> whatever went on this side 
because the pyromancy wasn't good against the big monsters, but the cannon was, so we had this side pretty much covered than we felt. Um, and our scoring, two scoring units aiming for the hill, the Volgan up here, and Fastcav and um, other stuff here, Robin Hood over here, so a lot of vanguarders here, and then the fast um, um, Wild Huntsman here to be able to counter however they deployed. Uh, so we had first turn. Uh, I think this is after vanguards um, <coughs> and scouts, so we put some scouts here and vanguarded up here. Uh, same picture. Uh, Robin Hood vanguarded into the river. And then we had our first turn. So Robin Hood, he just ran up straight into the face of the Knights of the Sun Griffin. No fear. Uh, <coughs> Gilia Gonzalez, my Inquisitor, hi hid behind the um, Kestrel Knights. Uh, this wasn't in, the Wallagon wasn't in range on everything, and I think it moved backwards to get out of range from the Light Infantry. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much movement. Shuffled around a bit, moved uh, one of the Huntsman unit up here, and the, the Knights over here. Uh, there was very little armor penetration here, so they, if they we wanted to, they could go up here and assist. From another angle, and yeah, <laughs> this is um, a while later. Uh, so let's see here. Yeah. Um, our shooting phase in our first turn and magic phase, we we blasted off a lot of stuff on this flank, as you can see. Um, and the huntsmen they fled. Down the, oh no, the, not the huntsmen, the the rangers, imperial rangers. So this unit is a lot smaller. On uh, spearback is gone, and uh, so is our some light infantry. Um, so yeah, their turn. He charged with the uh, Knights of the Sun Griffin into Robin Hood. Um, he killed two of them, then he died. Uh, or no, 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 I'm getting getting ahead of myself, sorry. The, they didn't charge. The Marshal flew over and used the egg of Ocelotl on uh, Robin Hood, did two wounds. Uh, then they uh, blasted a lot with their Wizard uh, on this unit. Um, as I said, I had second awakenings. I did a lot of hits. They didn't, didn't need it. They just rolled 11 hits on ice and fire every time. Not quite, but two times at least. It was really dangerous. Um, so I think in the first turn, the Pathfinder unit just blew up and then uh, uh, he did some wounds on this unit. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Robin Hood charged the uh, Knights of the Sun Griffin in our turn then, and just one health point remaining, he killed two and then he was dead. Fair enough. Um, and we continued blasting the, away at these guys, so the Light Infantry here are almost dead, I think there are like three guys left, and the Wizard. Uh, and my Gilia moved up here, the Inquisitor. That's pretty much it. In their turn, um, they could re reform <coughs> with the or, or pivot with the remaining two Knights of the Sun Griffins. So they were able to charge here into our fast cav. The next picture, yeah. So they killed those. They continued to whittle down my light infantry with the ice and fire. We we started abandoned ship and joined this unit. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. The uh, Alpha Carnos are moved down here. Uh, they killed the uh, uh, Heath Hunters and reformed to face Gilia. And in our turn, yeah, uh, Gilia and the Wild Huntsman charged. Uh, this should be a good matchup for, for my Inquisitor. 3d6 attacks, lethal strike, multiple wounds, d3. Uh, I did one wound. That was sad. Um, the Wild Huntsman did a few wounds. Uh, one uh, Knights of the Sun Griffin remained, 
So he had four attacks, directed all of them at uh, my Inquisitor, hitting on four plus, wounding on four plus, and then I had like four up armor ish. Uh, I think, yeah, something like that. Maybe a five up against the the uh, three attacks from the uh, Griffin, and he just killed her straight out, three health points. So yeah, that was bad. Uh, but they broke and they fled and uh, fled off the table. So there's that. Uh, you can see these guys w went off the table. <coughs> um, the Volagon fired at the Carn Alpha Carnosaur. Did a lot of shots. I think he did, did a max maximum number of shots without misfiring. So he's six and two fives. Uh, but he only hit on sixes then and he did nothing. He did a lot of hits but uh, failed to wound on five up. Um, we killed more stuff here, the Saurus Warriors we can't really do much against with the Pyromancy. Um, so, meh. And, yeah, that's about it. Um, let's see. The last things that happened that we got the combat here with the um, Forest Guard and the big Saurus Warrior unit. They eventually won that. Um, we killed off the last units here and uh, yeah, got some more points. Uh, the one last bit of annoyance was they fired with their uh, crossbowmen. I think there were like 11 of them then at the uh, Volagon. Uh, they had accurate, uh, accurate so hit on 4 up um, and then wound on 5 up and they just killed it. Did 5 health points. That wasn't average they died, and that meant I didn't get a second round of shooting against the uh, Alpha Carnosaur, which was sad. But they won in the end, and uh, uh, I th yeah, they won the... Uh, or I think we won on points, actually. Um, don't really know how. Um, or maybe we won the scenario? Uh, I can't really remember. Maybe, no, it was a draw in the scenario. Yeah, we got uh, both. Both of us had sc uh, two scoring units on the on the hill, on the, on the bridge. Uh, so we uh, we got uh, eight points. So now we're at eight. Hooray! Second game, or third game, I meant. Uh, but it's easy to confuse because it's the same table, um, and we were facing these blokes. So Paul and Eric. Um, Lovely dudes, and I had uh, had a practice game against um, uh, against them before, so I knew their knew their army pretty well, pretty well, and, and they didn't knew my army that well because I had switched it up with a new teammate. So this is how it looked. Uh, so same table as I said. Uh, we have gray lights and Rymanites. Uh, these had the uh, flaming banner, the banner of speed here, I think. Some mounted yeomen. An, an eagle, um, a unit of uh, sea guard with a um, damsel with master of shamanism, a, a Kendrick Tower VSB with a O that did, uh, yeah, she, he, he was um, uh, Queen's Com. Oh, yeah, it must have been that way. He was a Queen's Companion VSB. With three, three shots from the bow, and then there was a Prince uh, Kendrick Tower adept with the bow of Elu. So a lot of firepower from that unit, and a lot of magic. And he also had uh, magic resistance 3 on the unit. Uh, a bolt thrower down here, and a unit of Knights of the Realm with a general in it, um, who it was a Duke with the Nova Flare, and I think Virtue of Renown or Might perhaps, the one that gives you extra attacks if you kill something. So he, he had uh, a lot of attacks and he always countered the charging, he had Fortress of Fate so he rerolled re all ones and uh, every attack, every thing he killed gave him another attack, so he, he dished out like eight, 8 wounds on average against most things. Uh, so that was nasty. We were re very, very troubled by this matchup. Uh, afraid that they would just steamroll us, uh, move up, and charge and kill us. Um, 
they felt pretty good about the matchup too. Uh, we deployed down here <laughs> pretty much as far back as we could. Um, the, uh, in the in the practice game, the totemic summons made a lot of trouble for us, so we placed a lot of units facing facing at, <laughs> at the back end, uh, my Inquisitor included, because he didn't have much of a target uh, anyway. Nothing with multiple wounds. Um, Wild Huntsman here, Knight in the middle to take the the bridge if necessary, Light Infantry and the uh, Forest Guard over here. Um, yeah. But we need not worry, basically. Uh, they moved up, um, we choose side, sides, they dropped everything and uh, uh, went first. first too. So uh, we put quite a lot of firepower on this side and it paid off or really a lot of firepower. Um, these guys m moved up and fired at the knights. I used fire uh, pyromancy, we had some pathfinders and a cannon I aimed at them. Pyromancy killed three knights I think. Um, if you get, get enough hits and wounds uh, he will find some, some uh, two up saves. The handgunners felled another two despite hitting on sixes. Um, they did that a lot in the tournament. Uh, the Pathfinders felled another one. That meant there was only four knights left and the general. The cannon took aim. It hit. It wounded. It failed the five of ages. And I rolled a one on the, mul uh, on the multiple wounds. So I did two wounds on him. Um, but I can't complain. I mean, they, we did way better than expected um, against this unit. And it gave us an, a whole new handle on the situation. He turned tail and ran voluntarily, uh, so the general jumped out and hid behind the geoman. And he was a bit careful up here. Um, you have Robin Hood over here, and they're pretty far, much afraid of him. Bork Orc uh, is the only orc, the only ranger remaining. Uh, the other were shot to death in the first turn. Um, but that's pretty much it. <clears throat> So we did some more wounds, in, in our next turn we did some more wounds on this one and started linking up wounds on the um, Sea Guard. Uh, magic resistance is a pain, but uh, if you cast spells on the knights and put blaze on them, you kill a few elves and ignore that pesky resistance. Uh, so Bork Orc and Robin Hood were very, very aggressive up here. And yeah, we get a close up of that. So we we used Bork Orc to Chef, so they can only, only charge, charge one of the units into Robin Hood, and he could handle that no problem. And hitting first and killing most of the unit. He could probably handle both of them charging too, but it was a bit more risky. Um, so they put they <laughs> uh, retreated, put uh, the Rymanites back, back here. The Grey Knights shuffled about about a bit. Put some some Chef in front of uh, Robin Hood. And uh, turned the shooting unit around and fire, fired at him too. Did one health uh, health loss. Uh, and by now they also managed to get a totemic summon through over here. Uh, we had dispelled it previously, but letting a swarm of insects through killing the Volagon eventually. So these knights are dead. They stood here for a long while. That was annoying. Um, Robin Hood charged the chef unit, and he did four, uh, four wounds total with his uh, his uh, uh, sliver of the blazing dawn and hitting on two plus and wounding on two plus. Uh, and the last human, he was really really brave, so he stood there, uh, which was amazing for us, perfect uh, because they couldn't shoot in in their turn their turn then, so we were we were super happy about that. Uh, the Wild Huntsman came up to assist in whatever way they could, and we continued blasting at this unit, not much left now. I think it is two guys left and three characters. Um, the cannon got a flank shot and killed, I think, three guys or something, so that was neat. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, 
<laughs> the knights here continued to be afraid of Robin Hood. We used Orc Orc again to screen and continued shooting and all of that too. Um, and the last turn of the game, they moved up their shooters, their characters with the bows down here and uh, killed our knight unit, so we lost the scoring unit. And then they moved up. Uh, they couldn't reach the bridge with all three units, but they moved up the the uh, realm knights and joined with the, the wounded general, and then moved up the Rhyme knights behind them. And in our last turn, uh, the last turn of the game, we fired everything we had at the uh, knights of the realm unit, um, <laughs> and it didn't go that well. Uh, Whereas previously we had slipped a lot of wounds through. Now they also had uh, the um, blessing of uh, Milady's up and uh, two whale tokens. So it was a bit more tanky. But um, we, uh, we didn't do that much. And then uh, I think one of the bow shots from the fast cav, the, the Heath Hunters, one of them was allocated at the general and it wounded. And he failed the, the two up armor save. They were debating should we use the the Miladis favor and uh, try to save the character or save it for later and save the unit that does gain the objective. And they elected to, to trust the five up Aegis of the. It was a yeah, six up. Uh, yeah, uh, strength four. To the six up Aegis of the, the general. They failed it. General dies, the unit fails the panic, and runs off the, t uh, off the uh, bridge. So in that last, last turn we got full points for the uh, realm unit, the general, and the objective. So we won that 17-3. Um, it was a great game. Uh, everything really clicked uh, for us, and the shooting really, really delivered. Um, next game. This was a table that we had eyed uh, beforehand, um, thinking it would be really fun to play at. So what's interesting here is that they used the, uh, a different flax card deck uh, for the, uh, aimed for the multiplayer system. So instead of gaining dice and tokens, you only gain tokens here. Um, about uh, 9 or up to 12 I think, yeah? maybe 15. Uh, so. You don't get that much dice, but the opponent can't dispel. Um, so that sounded a lot like a lot of fun with Pyromancy, um, but that was not all. Uh, we had a sorcerer's portal in the middle, so every time a fourth spell is cast globally on the on the table by a wizard, so bounce spells don't count. Uh, every time that happens, uh, you put a, t a, 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 a every time you cast a spell, basically you put a, a token on the portal, and when the fourth to token is put, the wizard that cast th that spell suffers four hits with strength four, and then you um, shoot out a, a spoils of war token uh, or marker from the portal in a direction chosen by the uh, player that cast the spell, um, and then the, the player with the most tokens win. Spoils of war tokens. So you kind of want to do that, you kind of want to ca cast that fourth spell every time. Uh, but you might kill your wizard doing it, so it was a bit dangerous. And also, when the 16th token is added to the portal, it just explodes and, and it just it, it goes nuclear. Really, really big explosion. But I don't think that happened ever any uh, any game really. So our opponents uh, played Ogre Khans and uh, Kingdom of Ecotain. Really great guys, but also very very skilled at the game. Uh, so we were a bit cautious, or maybe we should have been more cautious. But they had, uh, let's go here, we had Heavy Castellan, Little Shaft Base for 115 points, a Mounted Yemen, a Knights of the Realm with a Damsel, a Master of uh, Druidism, some Knights of uh, Knights Aspirant, uh, some more Knights Aspirant. So that's the, uh, and a t another. Castellan chef is behind here. And then the Ogre army um, had one movement tray, which was also the the transportation tray for the whole army. So he had a big unit of uh, bruisers, 
uh, with Banner of Speed, I think. And then he had uh, a Great Khan in them, who was really killy. And a Khan BSB uh, with a Banner that gave them Strider and Swift Stride, I think. Uh, so they were very fast and they didn't, didn't care about our, our dangerous forest. And then he had two Keen Eaters, but they fitted on the on the movement tray as well uh, when transporting it. So, not the unit. Um, we got to choose sides, and it was uh, the horseshoe uh, in circle. So we picked this side, or no, no, they must have picked side, and we, yeah, and we, we, beforehand we had dis discussed this was exactly the way we wanted our deployment, and they gave it to us. And then we picked, uh, deployed first, and we dropped everything really, really aggressively, and they were a bit taken back by that, because they figured we had a gunline army, and they had a super, super combat army. We just pushed, 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 so no, uh, super hard. Um, so, yeah, some Huntsman and Huntsman, War Machines, and uh, uh, scouts over here, uh, Robin Hood up here, uh, Gilia in here, and other characters in here. So our first turn, um, yeah this is after their first turn, so we moved deeper into the forest, we moved uh, the Kessler Knights back here, Robin Hood up here, uh, behind their lines. Um, we used some f fire magic on the ogres and killed a few. I think three ogres are gone. No, just yes, two ogres are gone. And the uh, the Khan um, isn't in the unit from the start, and he, he's over here now. Um, some shaft down here. They shaft Robin Hood. Uh, moved about a bit, little bit here. Uh, in our second turn, let's see here. That's just the same picture, but better. Uh, is that also just the same picture? I think so. Yeah. Um, so in, in our turn, this is after the their charge phase, so, clearing charges. So, so sorry for the confusion. Uh, we mm, abandoned this unit with the characters. They joined the knight unit to, uh, here and moved up uh, this way. Uh, Robin Hood killed the Castellan and uh, overrun over there. Uh, Gilia uh, placed herself over here, ready to charge. Um, yeah, and in their turn, the knights. Uh, did I say that these were Realm or Grail? These are Grail. Those are. Well, I think I you had it wrong in, uh, in the start. But the Grail Knight charged around this unit and into my knight unit, so I decided to flee. And he re redirected into the light infantry. Um, let's see, yeah, and after movement, he, he reformed this to face this way. The Khan is still over here. Um, moved up some knights here, got a kin eater on the table. These guys moved in front of the wild huntsman and, and shot one to death, uh, redirecting them. Uh, yeah, that's about it. He, he cast his spell here, giving them uh, extra resilience, this unit. Um, and I think about now he triggered the, the portal, um, but he survived. And got a token on, uh, shot out and landed, landed in this unit. But maybe that was a bit later. Generally, I think it was later we... we uh, um, we uh, just didn't cast spells, basically. We were so afraid of that um, that effect. Also, my wizard <laughs> moving out of the forest, he failed a dangerous strain test, so he only had two health points left, which was annoying. Uh, yeah, he killed the, li the light infantry. Um, no problem. I think one knight died from the, the uh, woods. Dangerous strain. Um, sh our shooting. Uh, see here. Yeah, this is the end of our turn. Our shooting killed the Kin Eater. We charged both Gilia and uh, Robin Hood into the unit, uh, unit of Ogres, Bruisers, and the Kestrel Knights into the flank of the Grey Knights. 
the Grey Knights hadn't intended to be there. They failed their restrained pursuit test, so they ended up there a bit involuntarily. Um, these two were uh, very, very good at killing ogres. Um, Gilia just annihilated the champion, uh, and uh, Robin Hood killed, I think, did seven wounds to the unit, something like that. Uh, two, two, in two in return, though. Um, and the Kessler Knights were the real champion. They, they did, killed four, four Grey Knights, uh, won the combat, but they were steadfast, too, unfortunately. Uh, here we sh I decided to my uh, my opponent's uh, disapproval that we didn't shouldn't charge this unit and just get killed in, on the counter charge. So we passed the the um, frenzy and the march test and moved over here. And we shuffled around a bit here. Some poor placement. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So in their turn, uh, this knight charged down he here. <clears throat> needing 10 on the dice, but they had a reroll. So they got into the rear of the Arcan engine. Uh, they did two wounds, which is pretty bad. Uh, I did two back, which is incredible, given I have four attacks with AP zero. I still lost though, and I broke. Uh, he didn't catch me, but he overran into this knight unit. As you can see here. Um, they killed Robin Hood, but we have almost annihilated this unit now. Um, this went on combat with the Grey Knights and the Castle Knights went on for a while. Eventually he, he won, uh, with one knight left. This combat, uh, I rolled... I had seven attacks coming at him with great weapons. Strength uh, five or uh, three of them with strength six. Uh, I missed all of them, all three up. That was a shame, but yeah. I can't complain. Um, we killed one of the Kinators, the next one arrived, same place pretty much. Uh, these guys had moved up and just uh, used their throwing weapons to kill all four Wild Huntsmen. My teammate wasn't happy about that. Uh, but yeah. And here the... Um, these Heath Hunters charged the Ogre unit and together with Gilia they, they killed the lost Lost of it and broke the BSB and ran it down. We had cast perception of strength uh, on the unit so that they, they were one less strength, which is what saved Gilia. Um, the the Kinney recharged my unit of knights, uh, didn't kill the wizard, uh, but they broke them. And they, uh, they, uh, they managed to flee and survive. Uh, and the spearman killed both the Kinney and then the knights. Uh, they resurrected a knight over here and got the objective. So, now that's pretty much the end. Um, and it was very, very, very even on uh, on victory points. I th we got, I think, about 2,900, and they they got one more, and then they got the objective. So we got uh, seven points. But it was a fantastic game. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that's just a better picture. Uh, yeah, he, he charged here and uh, had to flee, but didn't catch me. Okay, so, <clears throat> game five, the last game. So, they did the pairings uh, before the tournament, and uh, I was paired against this team. Uh, but then, due to the dropouts and the, the new team-ups, um, we, we face another army. Um, so I had looked quite a bit on this army and was really looking forward to playing <coughs> playing it, uh, piloted by, by two lovely ladies. And a really beautifully painted army to boot. Uh, both of <laughs> both halves. Um, so, fantastic that we got to play uh, in the last game. Uh, it was a perfect ending to a otherwise awesome tournament. Um, we, the, the scenario, we had some flax cards that uh, included some weather uh, effects, so uh, a, lot of the, a lot of them affected shooting, uh, but as it happened, it uh, we didn't draw those cards, basically. Um, yeah, we were lucky that way. And then in the middle, the skull uh, scoring units within six inch of it got a token on them. 
and if they moved to within three inches of either the pillar or the lake here uh, they could discard that token and put it in your pool and the uh, play with the most pools on their on their units the, the most tokens in their pool and on their units at the end of the game uh, won the secondary objective but uh, if you if you killed an enemy unit with a a token on it uh, in close combat you took their token to your pool but if you kill it with shooting they took it to, to their pool so you didn't want to shoot uh, these units to death um, so their army they had uh, let's see this is before vanguard we can go to the next picture uh, yeah this is after vanguard so they had a hunter over here <coughs> um, and some yetis unit of bruisers with a shaman a master of uh, no adept of shamanism eight trolls cave trolls a great green idol a git launcher three mercenary veterans <coughs> with uh, pad weapons and little strike i think plate armor something like that uh, common goblins with bows and shields a master of firemancy with them Excuse me, I need to take, take a sip of water. <clears throat> uh, some tribes women with uh, paired weapons. Um, or no, I think they had iron fists. I'm not sure. Uh, some cave goblins with a madget and bows. And a rock rock and some wolf riders. Um, or not warfighters, they were uh, cockerel riders, something like that. Rooster, rooster riders, that sounds good. Um, our army, uh, worth pointing out, Rob Robin Hood is over here. This must be, for, must be before his vanguard. Uh, Gilia over here. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> one extra rule that I shouldn't, should mention. Uh, characters and monsters. Uh, if they were in base contact in the magic phase, they switched stats, uh, which is insane. Um, so if we got uh, Gilia into contact with the Rock Rock, they would switch stats for the rest of the game. Uh, so that sounded like fun. We couldn't really figure out how to handle uh, multi um, uh, multi-part profiles, but. We just went with, went, went with whatever felt good at the moment. Uh, so yeah, that's our armies. Uh, we had first turn, so we moved up these guys in front of the wolf riders or rooster riders. These moved up a little bit to uh, throw some pyromancy and some <coughs> some gunshots at the goblins. This guy moved up to get it in range. Uh, these two moved within six of the uh, token giver, uh, and over here, here just shuffling about a bit. Robin Hood moved up here, and the Castro Knights up here. Uh, that is the same. So in their turn, they backed up a bit with Rock Rock. I didn't do anything to it, uh, but I tried to. Uh, these guys shot three of the Wild Huntsmen to death, that's pretty nice. These moved up a bit, took a token each. The tr trolls moved down the hill and were joined by the Shaman. Uh, this unit turned around to face Robin Hood. And the Yetis, uh, one of them fell by, by the uh, Pathfinders, uh, moved into the forest here. Uh, <clears throat> and these are, are, are uh, Fast the Heath Hunters, down here are the Wild Huntsmen. Um, I think they killed a few uh, guys here with Pyromancy. Um, that's about it. No, a, th a few guys here, it seems. Yeah, those are some some guys are missing there. Um, in our turn, see here. Yeah, uh, Robin Hood and these guys charged the uh, Bruisers, and I cast. Um, Perception of strength on the Castro Knights, uh, so they they rocked that combat. 
the Forest Guard charged the uh, mercenary veterans, killed one of them, uh, but took some damage in return. Pathfinders are redirecting the trolls. The hunter over here. Um, these guys killed the the wolf fighters. The two, two that were left with the six attacks, they did nine hits. That's pretty good. Uh, knights moved over here, aiming for the pillar. And uh, the huntsman did a wound to the uh, rock rock. Finally, a beast that is uh, that has armor, so you get mileage out of that little, little strike. Uh, shooting, I did some more wounds. Magic, I did some more wounds on this unit, and uh, I picked one of the uh, uh, tri tribes women off. Uh, they moved up to cave goblins uh, through the Madget through the knights, and back here. Uh, I wish I could show the next pi picture uh, with how much dam it, damage it did, but sadly they rolled a one on a number of hits and a one to wound, so they didn't do anything with that awesome little Madget. Um, so, a bit unlucky on their part. Uh, that could have been <laughs> really, really dangerous, really. Uh, so, but they charged the tribes women into the forest guard. The rock rock charged and killed the wild huntsman. Some poor placement on our part. Um, <laughs> the great queen idol charged Robin Hood into the weirdest combat ever because they switched stats. So Robin Hood was had three attacks. Um, but he he hit on five up. Um, yeah, something like that. It it, it was really really weird. Uh, the the idol won that combat, but she used to not pursue, and the Robin Hood just fled three inches down here. They got into combat again and kept switching switching stats back and forth a lot. Too. Uh, this combat they killed uh, a bit, but five left and. Uh, Thanks to the shooting, they was the they didn't have a rank in the flank, so we were steadfast and stood. Uh, and in our, our turn, the um, Arcane engine charged into the flank of the tribes women, and uh, yeah, the, the forest guard were annihilated. But the uh, Arcane engine won the combat against the tribes women, um, as we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Over here, uh, shooting the Volagan annihilated the uh, goblin unit. The knights delivered their uh, token. Gilia failed her march test, so she, she wasn't able to place herself in front of the rock rock, so took position in the back, ready, ready to, to charge in the, in the next turn. Um, heath hunters into, or well, not heath hunters, huntsmen into the uh, mam mammoth hunter. And the Kessler Knights are flying about back here. Um, the last mercenary veteran over here. Uh, so they moved the Rock Rock up here, and I got a 8 on dice charge here with Gilia, and I made it. So she was super happy. <laughs> that combat, she, she took the stats of the Rock Rock. Um, still had her 3 D6 attacks, thanks to Swarm Master. Uh, still only <laughs> only strength 3, thanks to Swarm Master, so she didn't really get that much. But she did uh, two little strikes, uh, and those uh, did seven, uh, five wounds. Uh, so, dead rock rock. Uh, as we can see here. Um, the knights moved up just to get out of the way from everything. Uh, the trolls moved down. Uh, the Kestrel knights and Robin Hood eventually killed the uh, Great Green Idol uh, and the Git Launcher. The, the Arcane Engine charged into the unit of goblins, first into the, the tri Lost Tribeswoman, killed her, and then into the unit of goblins and killed them. Discipline 6. Steadfast. Um, and the Heath Hunters killed the last mercenary veteran. Um, who was trying to hide but failed. So, yeah, that's that's the end of the game basically. And it was a big victory for us. We got the objective too. Um, and a total of 18 points for us. Which meant that we 
just made it up to 50 points, which is 10 points point average and my my goal in every tournament. So <laughs> very very happy with that. Um, and other than that, I can say that it was it was five awesome games. I, uh, I want to thank thank my uh, all our ten op opponents. Uh, they made this tournament awesome. And I also want to thank my teammate uh, for showing up and uh, willing to team up. Uh, we I think we we worked pretty well together. We wanted the same things for the most part, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And lastly, a, a thank to to Dennis, the TO, for hosting this wonderful event every year. It is the best tournament, plain and simple. Um, so yeah, that's gonna do it. So the final thanks goes to you listeners out there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Hopefully a painted scramblings pretty soon. So cheers. Take care.